Hello and welcome to episode 17 of March to the Sea, the Vandals Let's Play series for Total War Attila. Last time, the Celts were completely overcome in Britannia with Indulf and her Manfred taking Sigantium and Aboricum respectively. Gismus and his mercenary navy pursued the remaining Abdanian fleet, but they were narrowly defeated and Gismus was thrown into the sea by his mutinous crew before the remainder of the Mad Raiders were caught and sunk in a counterattack by the Abdanians. Argemon and Thorsemon captured more territory for the Vandals from Gaul, and by colonizing the formerly desolate region of Visantio. We declared war on the Alamans, driving them back east and into the jaws of our ally, the Geats. The Huns and the Western Roman separatist forces moved into northern Dalmatia in force, and with the Marcomanni kingdom on the verge of complete annihilation, Hermenegild sails east to join Alavivus in the defense of Macedonia. It's a generally harsh winter with snow blanketing the land. Several provinces are suffering from the unseasonably bad winter storms with resulting reduction in fertility. Unfortunately for my agents, only the deceased Fridabal remains hidden, his corpse lost somewhere in a snowdrift in the north of Duracotorum, while Hethan's activities in Macedonia and Illyricum have been uncovered by the enemy. My new Macedonian governor, Safrax, has ranked up already and adds some basic skills to his repertoire. I have a new construction site at the recently recolonized Dorechium, which I used to place the province's resource building, the Olive Orchard. This building is tough to beat, with 20 resource production, 50 food, and 5% commercial wealth for no penalty. I also start upgrading the Dorechium settlement structure to Tier 3, hoping this will help me to fend off the hordes of Huns and legions of Western Roman separatists should they come this far south. I also upgrade the jetty at Dorechium to a trade jetty. At Africa, I'm still trying to sort out the imbalance of food shortage and public order excess by tearing down the Chieftain's Hall at Constantia. Even so, I start upgrading the Great Hall to a Hall of Elders at Carthage for the additional research boost and upgrading the settlement structure to Tier 3. Way up north in Caledonia at Hibernia, I disband Hermanfrid's mercenary army except for his Celtic onagers, which can't be beat for the price, and start building him a proper army of our own Germanic troops. I have a small problem at the recently recolonized Visantio, as Argemond has come under siege by the Western Roman Separatist Army, with half his men now dedicated to settlement building. I move Thorsamond and the Blood Boars up to help out the Curian Crows, but I'm not able to get into range this turn. Sindarad, who's reached the shore of Macedonia, joins up with Alavivus in the Solitude to support the army. With a huge number of Western Roman Separatist and Hun forces at the northern border of Dalmatia, Hermenegild lands adjacent to the undefended Marcomanni capital city of Solana. If the enemy attack in force, he may have to yield his position. Hethan and Beneath Aharis move up nearby to surveil the nearby armies. With my surplus spent, my armies dig in for the harsh winter to await the enemy movements. There's little action by the Celts, with the remnant of the Picts moving south toward Alden and a Caledonian champion going on the offense against Aralieva in Italy. The Alamans chase off a Geat army, but the Geats keep Augusta Trevorum under siege. The Sassanids vanish as quickly as they came to locations unknown. The Illyrians move south toward Sirmium, but they haven't quite reached the city yet, while the Western Roman separatists send a separate army from the one besieging Vasantio to intercept Thorsamond. The army has a huge number of Western Auxilia Palatina, backed up by some moderate quality infantry and a few other units. The balance bar is heavily against me, but I feel like Argemon could prevail, so I decide to fight this battle. The battle takes place in an area of forest adjacent to the road on the way to Visantio. It's toward the end of winter with patches of ground uncovered by snow. There's a slight slope to the terrain and I try to stay near the top, but my deployment is fairly straightforward setup. I start shifting my army to the left to square up with the enemy to force them to make the slight uphill climb to our position. 
They were marching toward me, but did not seem to be in a particular hurry. I even managed to get the onagers into position before they arrive. My archers move out to the left and start launching heavy shot arrows into the massed enemy, while the Alani spearmen unleash their warhounds into the enemy skirmishers. The hounds are as effective as ever, tearing through the lightly armored Roman skirmishers and very quickly routing the slingers. As the enemy cavalry appear on the right, I move my archers back and switch them over to flaming shot. One of my archer units isn't quick enough and suffers a cavalry charge for their unhorrid response to my command, but I'm nevertheless able to inflict some very significant damage on the cavalry with my nearby Germanic spears. The bulk of the enemy are now crashing into the spear wall comprising my front line. The Germanic spearmen hold steady as the warband axes move up to support them in melee, and the onagers, heedless of their comrades, start launching their shots overhead which land mostly among the enemy ranks. The Roman cavalry come back for a second charge, although the archers quickly drive the horses off with their flaming arrows. The battle has now more or less devolved into an infantry melee, although I have a slight advantage given the 500 or so axemen on my side. However, my archers are now free from harassment by the enemy cavalry and able to move up to the right and shoot arrows into the enemy flank. Orsaman himself has joined in the combat to bolster the morale of his men, although he is himself in grave danger by this risky maneuver. Several enemy units, including the enemy general, begin wavering and then briefly flee before rejoining the combat. In general, the fighting, although bloody for both sides, is continuing to swing in my favor, except for the lone group of Germanic spearmen bravely protecting my archers and holding off three enemy auxilia palatina on my right flank. Finally, the enemy losses, relentless archer fire, and terrifying onager shots are too much for them, and the bulk of the enemy force begin to retreat as a panic sets in. There's a moment where much of the enemy force rallies to rejoin the fight, although the general Gaius Silas and his unit are shattered. After about a minute of fighting, the battle is won, and the Roman separatists are in full retreat. I spend a little time chasing down the enemy survivors, and although I have no cavalry, I'm able to catch most of them. All but annihilated, Gaius Silas and his army managed to escape through the snow into the forest with a few of his men, alive but no longer a threat. We lost over 600 men, but I'm pleased with the result in light of the balance bar I was given at the outset. The Western Roman Separatist turn isn't done, however. They move armies further into Dalmatia, destroying the Marcomanni King and closing in on the Quadian-held Domavia, as well as the Marcomanni-held Salona. The attack by the Caledonian assassin Kurilos upon Aralieva resulted in our priestess being wounded, but fortunately not killed. An Illyrian agent also apparently made off with some vandal intelligence from Hermenegild's army, the Children of the Forest. Saffrax's bid for political office was obstructed by some of the anti-Gothic elements among the vandal elders, but his position is decreed by Genseric. Alavivus, who sought a bride, has found only a drunkard, and she's deemed unsuitable for this heroic man. The situation in Dalmatia is now at a tipping point, with thousands upon thousands of Illyrians and Roman separatists about to descend upon the province. Hethan manages to misdirect the Roman separatist army, the vengeance of Vetus, at Salona. But this is like stopping one rock of an avalanche. Venetha Harris has a similar success against the arrows of Artemy, so at least that's two rocks of the avalanche. Hermenegild, unfortunately, is also affected by an enemy misdirect attempt that is limiting his movement severely. Only with a forced march, is he able to move his army back into Jerachium before the advance of the Western Roman Separatists. It seems that Solona is doomed. I also move Alavivus and the Solitude up to Jerachium, hoping if Hermenegild is attacked, his retreat will take him in range of the city. With the Huns and Western Roman Separatists now nearing Italy, I need to strengthen my garrisons there. I pay the exorbitant fee to convert the Tier II settlement at Neapolis. I also start upgrading the grain stores at Thessalonica, knowing that many of my other upgrades will come with food and sanitation costs. In the neglected provinces of Iberia, I'm slowly starting to have some public order problems, so I upgraded the meeting hall at Cordoba to a tavern that should give a fairly large public order bonus, and likewise I convert the market stalls to a meeting hall at Emerita Augusta. Hermanfred takes his now mostly Germanic army south into Alden, where the Picts are offshore and Hunila activates her Inspire Populace ability to improve the public order and convert the local Celts to Aryan Christianity. 
Bisancio remains under siege by the Western Roman separatists, so Everick inflicts a harass army attempt on the heralds of Leanth, who are besieging the city. Thorsaman takes his blood boars east to encounter the remainder of the Thunderbolts of the Nine, the army led by Gaius Silas, to wipe them out in an auto-resolve battle. He follows up this victory with a move to the gates of Visantio, where the threat of his force repels the heralds of Leanth, relieving the siege. Both of my armies are now free to replenish, and should be near full strength in a couple of turns. I move Indolf and the Oath south to Augusta Trevorum, and now I have three armies in close proximity to continue pushing east against the Western Roman Separatists. I check the diplomacy panel just to make sure there aren't any opportunities for me there, but there don't seem to be, so I end the turn to await more Roman aggression. The Geats have decided to move in against the Alamans at Augusta Trevorum. While I'm not interested in helping them, they seem capable this time of taking the city. Alas, or aren't we to be like dogs for the Vandal Empire? To hunt their enemies and wag our tails for the scraps from the table of Genseric. The Vandals are strong in number, but weak in spirit. The snow makes them shiver from cold, and the strength of Woden makes them shiver in fear. No, Yngvi, we'll not be their dogs, but we must reap our harvest from the weak from whom it was sown. And right now the weaklings are these Alamani who hide behind their walls. Genseric has grown strong now, mightier now even than the Romans. I do not care if he beguiles the fates with Christian magic or appeases the old ones with nine sacrifices. Ah, I think he hates the Romans so much because they crucified his god. Perhaps you are right, and maybe one day I will eat this man's heart to find out how brave he really is. Get your huskarls ready, Ingvi. The walls of Augusta Trevororum quiver and quake and soon fall before the mighty ram. Get your axes ready to hew the weak and reap the harvest. The Illyrians ask for a peace treaty, but I wind up haggling too much to reach an agreement. The Western Roman separatist war machine continues trundling towards Salona, but no attacks take place. The Illyrian priest Appius Cursor at Salona has persuaded Venetha Horus, although he hasn't joined their side. In worse news, my longtime governor of Carthago Nova, Isilic, has died of natural causes at the age of 53. We finished research on the involuntary levy technology, which has completed the military development's mission, in return providing a small boost to further military research. With the martial ambition bonus in hand, I start working on advanced siege craft, which will eventually let me recruit large onagers once I built the tier 4 carpenter somewhere. At Duracortorum, I start building a farmstead in the empty site, where the pagan shrine was. I try to swat the recrudescent Gaul faction once again by besieging their city at Argentortum, although I wind up bringing in both Thorsemen and Argemen to make the siege an easier auto-resolve. This once again eliminates Gaul as a faction, but they could pop up again elsewhere. Argemen moves back to Visantia while Thorsemen takes up the garrison of Argentortum. Thorsemen has ranked up and takes a rank each in Cavalry Commander and Raven. I will definitely need to provide him with some cavalry before long to make his army more effective. Everett keeps up the pressure on the Heralds of Leanth, again harassing the army. With the situation in Dalmatia still looking fairly grim, like Venetha Horus, I think I've been persuaded by the Illyrians. I negotiate with them for peace, trying to come up with a way to arrange a marriage of their intelligent princess Artoria Flavia to Alavivas, but ultimately settling for just a small sum of money. Even with the Illyrians out of the picture, there are still six Western Roman Separatist armies I can see. Hermenegild sends the other Hermenegild to harass the Spears of Minerva, and in this he has a great success. Our champion Sindarid also moves up to Solona, but he isn't in range yet for an action. 
Erlieva, cornered at Rome by two hostile Caledonian assassins, turns to her faith to defend her from the savage assault. Pursuing this wounded deer into the city wasn't my best decision ever, but I'll kill this place as if it's the last thing I do. She'll not escape this time. Just got to be careful. Bloody patrols are everywhere. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Gorillos, you Celt swine. Come out of that house before we burn you out. You took the bait like the animal you are. I'm commander of the City Watch, and I have a warrant to bring you into custody. You'll be taken to the interrogation chambers of Lady Erlieva, and you'll be purified of your pagan ways. And then you'll be given a choice. Serve the Almighty or death. I'll never join you vandal bastards. Don't be so sure. The Lady Erlieva can be very persuasive. Erlieva scores a critical success in a persuade attempt against Kirillos, with an impressive, if completely ironic, result. Kirillos, the murderer of Godogisil, has been persuaded by the fear of God, the promise of the afterlife, or perhaps even the allure of the beautiful and charismatic, if stupid, Erlieva to join the Vandal cause. Hermanegild moves on to assault the heirs of Mars, but the Western Roman Separatist army retreats before his advance. He then force marches west to Salona, where he and the children of the forest await the onslaught. With Hermenegild in imminent danger, Alavivas brings the solitude north to reinforce his cousin. I make a few minor building upgrades, including the stores at Lugdunum and a vineyard at Aqua Sextii. I also have a small sanitation issue at Caesarea and Mauritania, so I upgrade the store there as well. And while I'm at it, I upgrade the storehouse at Roma. After last winter, I don't want to get caught without adequate grain stores. I hire a man from outside the family tree named Odotheus to govern the recently vacated post at Carthaginensis. He's a natural leader, which should help him in his role as governor. I also reinstitute the almsgiving edict at Carthaginensis before I end the turn. The Caledonians ask rhetorically if we shall hack at one another until our enemies can gorge themselves on flesh. And my answer is yes, I do intend to hack at them until they are ground meat. The Huns now appear in the Cisalpine region, with several armies laying siege to Ostrogoth-held Mediolanum. It doesn't appear the Ostrogoths will be able to hold out for too long, so this gives a new sense of urgency to my conflict with the Western Roman Separatists that is currently demanding my attention. The Separatists then bring their forces to bear on Hermenegild. Although reinforced by Alavivas, the four armies attacking still seem to be too much to handle, so Hermenegild retreats to try to gain a more favorable matchup. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to quite reach the river, and he's pursued by three of the four armies, although the largest force does not appear to have joined them. And now I have no choice except to fight, despite the odds. The first attacking army of the Separatists is that of Publius Burris, a slightly weak force with several spear and skirmisher units. Unfortunately, as we reach the deployment phase, we see what a bad position we're in. We're at the bottom of a steep slope, and I'll have a long climb if I am to reach the high ground. I line up on the left-hand side of the deployment zone as high on the hill as I can get. I immediately begin rushing my infantry up the hill toward the left-hand side of the map, with the cavalry move in to the right to intercept the enemy cavalry who have already begun moving in to take advantage of the slope. More separatist skirmisher units and spears begin emerging from the trees onto the crest of the hill, although by this time, our relative height on the terrain are almost even my troops are becoming tired from the climb. 
I'm forced to halt my ascent, as the enemy cavalry ignore my own Alani horsemen and wheel into my infantry. I'm fortunately able to take the brunt of the Roman cavalry charge with my spearmen, and the enemy cavalry are quickly repelled. With the Roman spearmen closing in, their skirmishers begin launching their deadly javelins, although they're forced to retreat before the arrows of the Germanic longbowmen. With my horsemen slipping on the rain-soaked slope, they nevertheless manage to make their way to the enemy slingers, who they ride down in the mud. My second unit of Alani horsemen see a soft spot in the enemy ranks, with their general and javelins now exposed to a rear charge, with their spearmen committed to melee with my front line. A mass of frenzied and screaming Germanic axemen crash into the melee, while Hermenegild directs his men from just behind the front lines. Publius Burrus, the enemy general, has foolishly decided to support his slingers, and the result is a devastating two-way charge on his unit by my Alani horsemen. The numbers of his Palatina Guard retinue drop precipitously, although his army retreats before my psychotic axemen, well before Publius Burrus himself is killed in the fighting. My men are only able to just drive off the entirety of Publius Barris's force and climb a few more steps on the hill before the huge combined reinforcing Western Roman Separatist armies emerge from the trees. Hermenegild screams for his men to organize into a front line to receive the Roman charge. My two spear units at the top of the slope are nearly enveloped by the advancing swarm of Roman Separatist spears as their comrades scramble up the slippery slope to their aid. I've managed to contain the huge army for the moment in the center and on the right but their regiments are spilling around my left flank toward my vulnerable archers on the Onager crews. Most of my axemen move up to support the spears, although I send a single unit back to relieve the archers from the oncoming spearmen. My Alani horsemen, meanwhile, have circled all the way around the enemy's rear to the top of the hill at the edge of the forest, where they again work in tandem to crush a unit of spearmen with front and rear cavalry charges. The Auxilia Palatina fall to my horsemen, who then turn their attention on the Sagittarii, the death of the enemy general leading the attack has done wonders to break the morale of the reinforcements, who in spite of their superior numbers are shattered by the ferocity of the Germanic warband charge. Their entire left-hand complement are now permanently broken and in full retreat, and the odds are now very much in my favor as I'm able to focus my attention on their remaining forces on the right. While one unit of Maialani cavalry mows down the Roman archers, the other inflicts the coup de grace with a rear charge on the bulk of the enemy infantry, sending their forces into a panicked and ineffectual retreat. There's a tremendous amount of work left for my already exhausted cavalry in chasing down the fleeing enemy regiments, although certainly there are far too many to catch them all. Two of the enemy armies fall back in disarray, although the third is completely destroyed by Hermenegild's Children of the Forest. Unfortunately, the Western Roman Separatist turn isn't over, as Elevivus is then assaulted by the remaining fourth Separatist army in the local area as well as yet another which appears out of the fog of war. Again the odds are not in my favor, but I decide to fight the battle. This battle is on an open plain with a minimal slope with elevation on the left. I try to start with a little bit of the high ground in my favor, setting up on the left with my several spearmen making up a long front line. I only have one archer unit, who I put on the left. As the battle starts, my two Alani horsemen move off to the left, with a unit of mercenary Hunnic horse archers visible in the distance. I try to keep my horsemen concealed behind the hill, but they're spotted by the horse archers. As my onagers rain death down on the oncoming force, my Alani horsemen are pursued and caught by the Roman cavalry, although fortunately they seem to be up to the task of repelling the enemy charge without much difficulty. With the enemy cavalry in retreat, my Alani horsemen next focus on the Hunnic horsemen. My right flank has come under pressure from a unit of cataphracts who aren't able to inflict much damage thanks to the heavy spear wall that blunts the impact of their charge. With the enemy spears now engaged across my front line, I can see enemy reinforcements continuing to pour in from the rear. Fortunately, my cavalry have broken the mercenary Huns on the left and are free to harass the enemy rear, destroying the enemy Andre crew and drawing the enemy general back. With their forces losing the melee, several of the Roman separatist regiments break. 
although they still have many more continuing to join the fight. Both of the enemy general units are now facing off against my cavalry, and I decide to charge one of them each with a unit of Lani horsemen. In particular, the reinforcing general, Publius Putitus, has such a small retinue that he's likely to fall quickly, although it will likely take more time to bring down Gaius Scivola, the Roman commander taking charge of the attack. Numerous enemy units are wavering or retreating, but Alavivus, in his zeal for battle, has joined the front line on the right, and his unit has taken heavy losses. My cavalry are now in trouble, as they haven't been able to kill off either of the enemy generals who are now being reinforced by a unit of spearmen. However, the bulk of the Roman front line participating in the melee are wavering or routing, and my lone regiment of archers swap their arrows over to the morale-eroding whistling shot to launch some arrows over the heads of the Romans from the left-hand flank. Seeing the worried faces of the men on his shrinking retinue, Alavivus sounds his warhorn and tells his men to hold steady. As the arrows whistle overhead, and the harsh braying of Alavivus' warhorn sounds over the battlefield, the Roman line begins to falter, and their men begin falling back in groups. However, just as victory appears imminent, Alavivus staggers as his chest is pierced by the weapon of an auxilia spearman. In the moment of abject panic, Archibald's voice is heard above the clamor, imploring the men to remember the stern resolve of Alavivus, and to hold their ground and continue pushing the Western Roman separatists back. No men, do not falter. The eagle is bloodied and his wings are broken. My brother's injuries are grievous, but you brave soldiers are his defense. Take the eagle's claws from his body. Do not let the beak of this foul creature peck at his eyes. The strength of God fills you, and with his blessing we win this battle and turn the tide of this war. Should Alavivus the Great perish, let him be carried on the wings of unblemished victory from this life into the next. After a few more moments of intense fighting, the wisdom of Archibald's appeal is evident as the Romans fall into disarray as their ranks are disrupted by the Vandal surge forward. As the Roman commander begins falling back, Archibald takes command of a unit of spearmen who run him down. The last of the Western Roman separatists then quickly lose their resolve and the battle is won, albeit at a terrible cost. Nearly 1,000 men of the Solitude, Alavivus included, were killed in the battle. Although the Western Roman Separatist force, the standards of Caesar, are all but destroyed. Only a single unit of Fundatories escaping the pursuit of the Solitude. They fall back to Solana, which has now fallen into the hands of the Western Roman Separatists. At the start of the following term, Archibald, a very sober and phlegmatic, even boring young man, wise behind his ears at 18, takes over the command of the Solitude. Carilos, our recent convert, was wounded by the Caledonian agent Veritovix, who has evidently attempted to take revenge for the treachery of his former comrade. We also find that the Alamans and the Orians factions have been completely eradicated by someone. The Western Roman Separatist spy Sextus Fedius has had a critical success in a misdirect attempt against the Solitude so I won't be able to move Archibald and his men very far, if at all. Sindrid attacks and wounds the Western Roman Separatist hero Vedius Helva, taking him out of the action for now. Although weakened, Hermenegild decides to take his army, the Children of the Forest, north to attack the Spears of Minerva, and they fall back towards Salona. Hermenegild pursues them, and they are forced to fight, but are reinforced by the Salona garrison. The balance bar is slightly in my favor, but I decide to fight the battle manually, hopefully to ensure victory. Hermenegil waits for the weather to dry to begin his attack. After arranging my forces at the top of the hill overlooking the small wood near the shore, I send the Alani horsemen forward to scout the enemy's position. The enemy reinforcements are seen in the distance, although the tiny spears of Minerva are initially not visible. The cavalry circle the woods searching for the enemy general. As they re-emerge on the near side of the tree line, Quintus Labio, the enemy general is seen moving out of the wood with his retinue of elite Roman horsemen and a small group of skirmishers. 
the Alani horsemen form into a diamond attack formation and charge into the rear of Quintus Labio and his men, initially inflicting a few casualties but driving back the Roman commander. As the Mediarii sacrifice themselves to let their commander withdraw, I send one unit of Alani horsemen in pursuit. The Comes hold their ground admirably for a few moments until the skirmishers are broken and my second group of cavalry come charging in. Run through with an Alani spear, Quintus Labio slumps in the saddle and falls from his horse. As I expect the enemy morale to be seriously damaged by this turn of events, I feel confident to move my main infantry line forward to encounter the advancing reinforcements at the foot of the hill. I send the cavalry toward the left flank to again seek a window of opportunity. A group of cavalry approach my spear wall on each side. On the left, the skirmisher cavalry pause to throw their javelins, while the mercenary Germanic mounted warband on the right charge ineffectually into my spearmen. Alani cavalry harass the enemy with a brief rear charge, sowing disarray in their ranks as they spin around and are unsure of which facing to adopt. As my Germanic warband enter their frenzied state and begin the massacre, the archers start adding their arrows to the chaos while the Alani cavalry circle around behind the enemy line to neutralize the Roman skirmishers. The Western Roman separatists are quickly routed after this, and it becomes simply a matter of running down the survivors at this point. We lost 274 men in the engagement, which I think is fairly reasonable given the depleted state of Hermenegild's army, although I certainly would like to have lost as few as possible. The enemy forces are decimated, and I have all but beaten back the immediate threat posed by the Western Roman separatists in Dalmatia. Hermenegild the hero makes another harass army attempt against the last remaining Western Roman separatist army in the area with any units left in it, but his attempt is a failure, although he has leveled up once again from the effort. By contrast, the typically successful Everick scores another critical success harass attempt against the Heralds of Leanth, the Western Roman Separatist army on the road between Octodurum and Augustavillen Delacorum. I'm not able to reach them this turn, but I move the oath onto the road, blocking the army's movement back to Octodurum. Thorsamund, who remains at Argentoridum, swells the ranks of the Blood Boars with a few more spearmen and axemen. Hermenegil moves into Salona to test the strength of this settlement but they're still reinforced by the Western Roman Separatist Army, so the Children of the Forest withdraw to the relative safety provided by the Solitude, who are nearby in reinforcement range. We'll leave the story here for now. We've managed to deal some extreme damage to the offensive capabilities of the Western Roman Separatists, although they may not be entirely crippled yet. Regrettably, Olivivus, one of the best and most promising young generals to grace the Vandal Empire was killed in a valiant defense against superior odds, although his half-brother Arjabad was able to salvage the situation and bring victory to the Solitude even after the loss of their former commander. With the threat of the Western Roman Separatists diminished, although not eradicated entirely, the Huns have now arrived in Cisalpine Gaul, bringing a tremendous number of forces to bear in the Siege of Mediolanum where our allies, the Ostrogoths, too proud to admit our forces into their lands to assist in the defense, appear in danger of imminent destruction by Attila and his ravaging hordes. Even so, Vidimir and his Ostrogoths remain the last line of defense between the Huns and the borders of our Vandal Empire. If an effective defense is to be constructed, Genseric will have to order the reallocation of a tremendous amount of men and resources in a very short period of time. Thanks for watching, and join me again next time for another episode of March to the Sea. <laughs>